Hi, everyone. Welcome to Narcissism Recovery Podcast. This is Yitz Epstein. I'm your host. I'm a narcissistic abuse life coach. And today we have a very special show. I'm joined by Joe DiBianca, who is an addiction and a success coach. I have been following Joe on LinkedIn for a long while here and love his content. Joe, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, it's, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm also a follower of your work as well. So it's awesome that the two minds are meeting today. Yes, thank you. Thank you for being a follower and um, such an honor. Well, part of the reason I wanted to have you on is because a lot of what you talk about is letting go, self-sabotage. And I, I think that those, I know, <laughs> those who struggle with narcissism, narcissistic abuse, those who've been a victim of it, usually codependents, have a very difficult time with letting go. We also have a very difficult time with self-sabotage. So I wanted to ask you, what are your thoughts on those who have been victimized? How do you let go? How do you stop, uh, stop self-sabotaging and live a healthy, uh, abundant lifestyle? Wow, what a, what a big question that is. And I get, I get the same question from all of my coaching clients. In fact, I myself, asked my mentor the same question 15 years ago. I would be like, you would hear the term letting go. You yeah. hear people say, just let go, just let go. Yeah. All you have to do is let go. I say bullshit. Here's, here's why, right? Because people use this term so loosely, they throw it around like they use it in a dismissive sense. Just let go, just let, no. When, you, when these people say, just let go, ask them, what does letting go mean? Can you define the term? And most, I mean, it's the most misunderstood term in our industry, but letting go is the ability, this is the definition, letting go is the ability to separate your feelings from the past events that have shaped them so you are no longer the mind-body connection to those events. Wow. So in our past, we become the mind-body connection to the past events that have shaped our feelings and our emotional addictions. So we're going through life dragging our past into our present, and it's affecting our future because of these conditioned behaviors, emotional addictions, and these self-sabotaging behaviors that we do over and over and over again. Yeah. We do. We do it again and again. And until we can let go, we are slaves to our past. We are in essence, it's way, it pulling us back. It's demanding something from us. Why do we self-sabotage though? That, that seems so counterproductive. <laughs> so why do we, I mean, letting go, I understand, but why, why destroy ourselves? Why hurt ourselves? Right. Ex exactly. I mean, it, it becomes a conditioned behavior and we all have our own Everybody has their own self-sabotaging cocktail. Yeah. And when, when I coach my people, I am an open book. You can ask me anything and I will share. But I also tell them, I am not perfect. Right. I'm not perfect, right? So we all have different challenges according to where we are in our lives, according to the amount of growth we've done. So every... Everybody has their challenges according to where they are. Got it. So in essence, we, we, we're all different. I would say we're all similar, but we're all different. We all have those right. nuances of our life. So, so, you know, I, I'd love to just get your, your, your tips and insights on how to do it. You know, what's the how to, what's the, what's the, uh, what's the few things you would say to somebody who is dragging their, their past self, that addiction to their past you know, the, the mind, the connection to the past. How do we, how do we just cut that cord? Because it's, it's not simple. Like you said, it, it's easy to say hard to do. And we, what, why are we holding on to that? Like, what, what are we so invested in that we have a hard time just letting it go? That is the question. The second question you asked was the question. It's not, it's not a, how do I letting go is not a, how do I, you mm. see, Addiction, addiction has a language style all of its own. Now I know, because I was a drug addict for a really long time, hard drugs, no pansy stuff, hard drugs. The, the drug use was an effect. There's the law of cause and effect. The drug use was an effect. The cause was all the trauma in my life. 
that that was the cause. So it's not everybody wants the blue pill or the red pill. Just tell I, I used to say the same thing. If you would just tell me how to let go, I will. That was it. But it's not a how do I, it's a why don't you? You start asking yourself better questions, you start getting better answers. And the reason why you don't is because it would contradict your struggle and force you to change your story and force you to be responsible. That's why a lot of people don't let go. And the how do I is the language of an addict. Like I said, addiction has a language all its own. And the how do I is part of it. Another part of it is, I don't know. I don't know. If I just knew, I don't know. That's another, that's the language style of an addict keeps the addict in denial of what they're, what they really want to change. Wow. That's deep. I, I love that. It's, it's almost like the way I frame it is actually the problem. If I reframe it and I see it differently, suddenly I have clarity and I'm not stuck. Is that, did I summarize that correctly? Right. So these, these self-sabotaging behaviors may have served you in the past, but they're no longer serving you now. Right. Right. But there is, there is, there is an addiction to the behaviors that you attach. There's, a, there's emotions that you attach to why you're doing what you're doing. And once you have a clear understanding of why you do what you do, sure. Then, you, then we can begin the process of change, right? Because once we put on the table, once we can see it, yeah, it's once we can see it, okay, now I see what has to be changed, where it came from, why I do what I do. Now we can begin the process of change. But if it's not on the table, we can't possibly change. But this process requires rigorous honesty. Right. And this is a place where a lot of people have a at first have a challenging time to step in because more often times than not, our violators and perpetrators are our parents. Ooh, couldn't agree more. I talk a lot about in my podcast, narcissism, obviously, and narcissistic abusers. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even like the word and the term narcissist. Uh, I just think it's it's codependency. It's an extreme form. What ends up happening, from my understanding, is, is that there's such a degree of disconnect from oneself. They end up becoming their own enemy. It's almost like it's them against them, uh, you know, which I say them, but it was me. It was me against me. So I just talk about myself in that instance, uh, as is the case for many addicts, which is why I guess I want to know what causes a person to split off from themselves to a point where they hate themselves. They become their own, I guess you know, perpetrator <laughs> in a sense. Right. They, 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 people tend to, they'll, they'll violate themselves if they can't find someone to violate them. Wow. Oh, I got to sit with that. They'll violate themselves because they cannot find somebody. So, okay. So from my understanding, they're violating themselves all the time when they pull in their victims. Now they can just outsource that violating that, that abuse. That's correct. Wow. That's correct. I agree. I agree. It's like people get into they 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 if if they if they can't find someone to reject and abandon them in relationships, they'll create their own rejection abandonment. Now, here here's a great point. Yet, where I like to shine a light on myself, because I know why I do what I do, and I know my own predictability. People think that oh, if you let go of these whatever you let go of, that they're gone forever. No. Letting go is a daily practice. Letting go is a mechanism of the mind. Letting go is something that requires daily practice, one day at a time over a lifetime. So I know my own predictability because I had a mom who was not capable of giving love or receiving love. I had a mom who resented me for being born. My mom didn't want me. My mom did not love me at all. And she made sure to show me that, right? I was doomed like many before I even popped out of her stomach because she resented me before I even came out. So all that cortisol and that adrenaline that was going through her head was also going through mine. So I never had that connection 
Because as human beings, we're all seeking the exact same thing. Attachment to a mother or a father to be protected, to be seen, to be heard, to be validated. And when those things aren't met, that's trauma. It doesn't necessarily have to be something catastrophic. So it's that disconnect. You said that disconnect from self. And also in, in the narcissistic relationship, as you know, the narcissist, it, he, he, it, it, they give you a little bit, they give you a little bit, and then they take, and then they gaslight, and then they give you a little bit. And then if, if, if you, you become these, they, slow you, they slowly mold you into a human puppet. Yes, 100%, so well said. And what you had to do, which is probably, you know, uh, similar to most uh, victims, as was the case by me, is you had to reject yourself to survive. Because if you're essentially being taught in order to survive here, you have to hate you like I hate you, and then I'll accept you, which is so bizarre. But, but in essence, we are, we are always craving that connection, right? We're craving our parents, we're craving our mom, we're craving our dad. And how do we let go of that connection? Because if we want it, we need it, right? It's, it's, it's almost, it's survival. Yeah. How do we let go of, a, of such a deep need? I mean, I know I'm struggling all the time to let go and I'm like, okay, I'm good, right? I'm, I'm, I've let go, I've accepted. And then bam, I can't let go. I'm like, wait, what a minute. I thought I'd let go. So how do it, how do you let go of such a powerful, important bond and get to a place where I believe you're at, which is so stunning, which is just, I love myself. You know, I, I accept myself and I'm going to shine that radiantly. Like you weren't loved early on, but here you are loving yourself. You, what's your secret, man? <laughs> what's your trick? Well, I, I, when I tell my clients, I'll tell you, it ain't all rainbows and sunshine over here every day either. <laughs> right. So I, I have my days where it's e right. I can let go like this because letting go, we can be let we're letting go all day, every day. Right. But then there are some days where it may take hours where it may take even a day or two because you had this event that's coming up in your life. Right. 100%. So, I mean, so it's, you're, 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 you're going to have, you're going to have those days and some of these, some of the work that you're doing, the feelings may not come up again. And some of the work that we're doing, the feelings may come up for the rest of our lives. And, and that's okay, because we, we learn and we practice the mechanism of letting go. The first step of letting go, which most people miss, is the breathing. It's, it's one deep breath. So simple. It's right. Right. It's, it's a deep breath because most of society is walking around out there breathing from up here. Yeah. Now, it's not as audible, but they're breathing from up here. It's short breath syndrome. That's because their body is in a place called fight or flight. This is most of the population. Right. right? So by learning to take be, becoming consciously aware raising your level of consciousness. I start out with the breath for my clients because it seems simple. It's really basic and it seems simple. But if you think about it, we don't think about breathing. We breathe. Now I'm asking you to think about it. Now I'm asking you to be aware to breathe. So what I did was, and what I teach my people is I put post-it notes all over the house. This is how serious I was. With one word, breathe. So I would look at, I would see on the toilet, in front of the toilet, in front of the mirror, cabinets in my car, I would see the word breathe and I would, I would take that breath. And when you take that breath, it settles you. It brings you present. It brings you in the moment. It brings you in present moment consciousness. And the more you become skilled at taking that deep breath throughout your day, you, those, those seconds of present moment consciousness begin to compound. Those seconds of clarity and calmness begin to compound. And you learn to rely on that breath, like I have, as a way to settle and begin the process of letting go. The second step to letting go is 
becoming consciously aware of your word choices and your dialogue with yourself. Mm. Oh man. I refer to the breath. I don't know if it's me or I've heard this, probably I've heard it, the portal to the present moment, right? Because you can only breathe in the present moment. But I want to ask you a very important question, one that I've struggled with. What is anger? Simple, but very confusing concept. As, as far as anger being, what is it? You want me to explain anger? How do you interpret anger? I, I treat anger like I treat the other, the other states as an addiction. Mm. And, and well, here's why. Because let, let's look at anger for a second. Anger, we get swelled up. Yeah. Right? We get, we get swelled up. We swell up. The ego swells up. It's, so it's, it's the high, high of the adrenaline when I'm screaming at you and we're fighting. And then it's, it's when, you're, when you're done being angry, you're like this. Yeah, it's exhausting. It's, sorry. it's so exhausting, right? So, so it's, it's the high, high, but it's a low, low that's actually a high, oh. right? It's, a, it's the high, it's but it's the low, low that's actually a high because at the bottom of anger is the guilt and the shame for being angry. Yes. yes. So it's this whole cardio cocktail of adrenaline, cortisol, dopamine. It's this whole cardio cocktail that we create through the emotion of anger. Yeah, I agree. The reason I wanted to ask that is because I find that one of the barriers to letting go is anger. I don't want Mm. to let go of my anger. Also, self-sabotage, I believe, is motivated from anger towards oneself. I'm angry at Mm. myself because I couldn't take revenge on the person perpetrating. So I'll get angry. So that's why I want to know, what is the, what is the connection between anger, letting go and self-sabotage? If, if anger is a big part of your identity as it was mine, right? Because aside from my mother, between the ages of nine and 12, yeah. when I was a little boy, I was sexually violated in every single way that you could possibly imagine by a guy in a neighborhood for four years in a row. You wanna talk about anger? Oh my. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the, I believe it's almost like a, ne- a needed mechanism to, to tell you that you're being, that you're, there's a threat. So it's, you kind of need that anger. It, it, if it becomes an identity, it's a challenge to let go of because that anger came from somewhere. Mm. And perhaps that anger protected you in those situations perhaps that ang- perhaps that anger acted as a shield in some way so if that's become your identity a lot of people hold on to it like it's a trophy yeah yeah like who would i be if i wasn't angry who would i be if i wasn't overwhelmed and anxious yeah well i need that anger to help me connect to that event because that event is still, it's still unresolved. So in essence, I'm still there. So my negative emotions keep me connected to the experience because in essence, I'm still there. And I want to connect to that part of me that's disconnected. Okay, we're getting a little trippy, but how do yes. you, in essence, I feel like I need my anger. I need my hate. I need my rage. I need my shame because those emotions in essence, make me feel alive. They make me feel like I'm still I have existence without those negative emotions. I'm nothing. Mm. Mm. Right. It's so it's like, it's like we, we, the ego, the ego wants to go always stay in the familiar. The ego is like an untrained pet. It's not your enemy. It's like an untrained pet and it will always stay. It wants to stay with, with comfortable and familiar. So it does not want you to let go of these lower level emotions because that's where it gets its J-U-I-C from. Mm. That's where it gets its juice from. The ego thinks it will die without the negative emotions. That's where it gets its energy from. Yeah, if I, so if I'm my ego, I'm also the emotions that the ego needs to feed off of. So I guess letting go perhaps from that perspective is letting go of the ego identity 
and accepting your true identity, which is absolutely your helmet. <laughs> yes. And, and what I, what I tell people is when you do the work, if you're really committed and serious about doing the work, you will meet yourself for the very first time. Wow. That's so powerful. How, how did you overcome? I mean, that's a silly question because there's so many elements of it, I'm sure. But what would you say is something that you were able to do or hold on to or develop or accomplish that helped you overcome what you overcame, overcame, you know, came because people who have gone through what you've gone through are not really coaches and successful. They're usually self-destructive addicts and sometimes suicidal. I was a self-destructive addict. Yes, I get it. But I, but you know, I, I, I came out of that and what was it? I've always been a seeker. I've never been satisfied. I've always been a seeker. I always knew that there was more. I've always seeked information. I never believed, I never believed what was told. I always looking for more. And, and when I first heard about emotional addictions, I never knew what they were. But when I first heard about them, I was like, oh my God, oh my God, that's, I, that's me. That's me. I had no idea. I became, I became relentless. I made a decision. I made a decision. It's, I am not going to live like this anymore. Because I was having these ups and downs, right? Like so many people do. They have ups and they have downs and they have ups. And they have downs and they don't know why. Well, that's because you're here. Then you self-sabotage and you go here. And then you have a good month and then you self-sabotage. I got tired of it. The pain became great enough. And I, there, there are many ways, there are many pathways to healing. It's, it's all right. It's all right. You have to choose your pathway like I chose mine. My pathway was Dr. Hawkins. I've been in, I, I've been a devotee of Hawkins for over a decade, studying his lectures, his works. That's my path. That's what delivered me. Hawkins brought me back to God because I was raised as a Catholic and it was a freaking nightmare. It was a nightmare. I didn't agree with any of it as a kid. It all didn't make any sense to me. It just, it didn't make any sense. That fear, the shame, the guilt, that's not God. When, when, I, when I read Hawkins, he explained God so simply, love. And when I heard that, I said, well, I can get on that bus. I can get on the love bus. That makes sense to me. I'll take it. Yeah, <laughs> and it brought me back to God. All you need is love, right? Well, it's love. What, what is forgive? So how do you forgive? Because I, I feel like there's an element of forgiveness that mm. is part of letting go. What are your thoughts? It is. It is. This is really good. So let's turn the light on me for a second. Let's do it. In, in my healing journey, now look, I told you my mom was not capable of giving love or receiving love. Right. She took care of me, but I never had that bond with her. Ever. Oh, what was the question? Yes, yeah, remind me of the question. Forgiveness. I want to know. Ah, how, forgiveness. How does that pertain to letting go? So people say again, just forgive, just forgive, forgive and forget. Yeah, no. I knew that I was going to have to forgive my mother. I knew that that was part of it and I wanted to do that. I also knew that part of the healing journey was to forgive the guy who molested me. Mm -hmm. His name was Bill. Now, I wasn't able to say his name yet. I said his name for the first time about five years ago, when I was really in, in this journey, like I'm not going to be denied. I am going to come out on the other side of this. That was my, that was my mentality. So I had to forgive these two people. How was I going to forgive my mother? I couldn't just, just forgive her because my whole life, what was I feeling towards her? I didn't love my mother. I didn't like my mother. In fact, I hated her right? Now, but she's dead. I don't love her. I never loved her. I don't like her. I never liked her. This might be hard for some people to hear, but this is called rigorous honesty. This is when you do the work. I don't love her. I don't like her. I forgive her. Mm -hmm. 
But my whole life, from the time I was a child, I didn't know the disconnect. I felt it. I felt it because I could never get close to her. And no matter what I did, I could never please her. But all this anger that I had towards her, all this resentment that I had towards her, I first had to step into. I first had to own. You know what? When I was told that from my mentor, Joe, it's okay. You don't have to love your mother. You don't have to like her. Your parents are people. They're people. You cannot like her and you cannot love her. When that permission was given to me, I was free. Because then I knew what that feeling was that I felt the whole time as a child. It was anger and resentment. It wasn't love towards my mother. So I had to step into that place and own that. And when I spent enough time there honoring my emotions and how I truly felt, when I had enough of that place, then I was able to cross the bridge to forgiveness. Because our parents, they don't do their best like some people do. Oh, my mom did her best. That was my answer. That was my response. No, Your pa our parents don't do their best and they don't do their worst. They do what they do because it's what they do. They don't know how to do anything else. And when I wrap my arms around that one, it really changed my life because I was able to forgive. Trauma is multi-generational. What, what our parents, what, their, what our grandparents did to our parents, our parents do to us. Yeah, uh, the line I use is we often have a hard time letting go of the emotions because we have a hard time letting go of the person who made us feel those emotions. So those mm. are like a, a bridge. But uh, if you guys, uh, if, you're, if you're listening to this episode and you do not follow Joe Bianca on LinkedIn, he is a force. I, every day I see your posts, uh, Joe, and super inspired. Uh, it's definitely helped me. Uh, what, what motivates you? Why, why is there this seemingly like fire under you that just burns, man? What, what is it? It is, it is the, the, it is what I get from all of my people. It's, it's the feeling I get when they break through every day. It's the feeling I get. I'm privileged. I feel privileged to have been chosen because that's what it, it's chosen to be in a position like this. Yeah. Chosen and honored and privileged to be in, in so many people's lives, to have them share their deepest secrets with me and not taking that position lightly. I'm a light warrior, I'm a light worker and I was put here for this reason and it's my people. It's these interviews with some, someone like you, Yitz, that inspires me, that fills me up, just fills me up, overflowing. Like just before I got on the call with you, my, my eight, my eight o'clock call, my, my, the, the transformation of this person from when I first started to now, I was, I was grinning from ear to ear when I was on the call with him. That's why I do what I do. I love that. It's fulfilling. It, it, it is ultimately what you were seeking and correct me if I'm wrong from the drugs of choice and from the emotional addictions, but it, you weren't getting it. It wasn't filling you up. It wasn't sustainable. And here you are. Not only does it fill you up, it actually, uh, it just creates just so much life and, and, and happiness and, and abundant vibrations. So that makes sense. That makes sense. Well, thank you for all that you do. I, I know that, uh, uh, like I said, you're inspiring me and, and so many others. And I know, you know, for those who are listening, uh, who listen to my podcast, you know, we've been through some stuff, <laughs> you know, and not to compare, no, it's all different. Um, but as you know, narcissistic parenting, selfish parenting, what it does to the child's psyche, what it does to the long-term uh, relationship, you know, patterns and effects, uh, it really is unbelievably catastrophic. And it blows my mind when, it, when somebody's able to, able to overcome that. And like you, I, I, I believe it's, it's similar. I, obviously, similar situation with mom, selfish, narcissistic. I was left empty running around, becoming a people pleaser, trying to get love from the outside world, just entirely rejecting myself. So I totally relate. And, and I think that you and I have that in common where I'm motivated to connect. I find that 
When I connect with another human being, call it what you want over sports or over healing, it is the connection that heals. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. Yes, it's it's that connection, yeah. like you being and myself being that compassion, showing that compassion, being vulnerable, showing our heart, which uh, vulnerability is our greatest strength. It's not our weakness. It's it makes me King Kong. Uh -huh. I'm so vulnerable. I'll cry in front of you. I cry with my clients. I cry in front of my clients. It, I, I it, yes. Yeah, you let go of that of that self judgment of that of that fear of 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 being seen. Well. Joe, what, what, what could you tell our listeners uh, a, a message if they're in the depths of this darkness, having a hard time letting go, having a hard time because they, they hate themselves, they hate what they've forced, been forced to go through, maybe even blame themselves. Uh, how, what would you tell them? What kind of message, uh, if there's something that could be said that can kind of just give them hope? Love yourself, man or woman. If you're a lady, ask yourself, how can I be, how can I honor the little princess inside me. Mm -hmm. How can, if you're a man, how can I honor that prince? How can I honor the little prince inside me? How do I reparent that child? What could I do? What could I do that brings me back to loving my inner child? What can I do to make my inner child happy? Love yourself, show compassion for yourself, give yourself this space. This isn't a, this isn't a journey. It's a, this isn't a sprint. It's a marathon. It's lifelong, but it's rewarding. And I would suggest that they read the book, letting go because it's the Holy grail for me. And it has been. Love that. Well, thank you so much for coming on here. Uh, again, you're such an inspiration and it's such an honor to have you here and hopefully we'll be doing this again. Thank you. Yes. You're a first class guy. I love and appreciate the work that you're doing. And it's, a, it's an honor to collaborate with you. It was a great surprise today. It was a great surprise. Yeah. Well, thank you. It, it's an honor on my end. I've been following you forever. And if you have not been following Joe, please do. You will not regret it. And thank you all so much for joining us for today's episode. Until next time, all the very best.